a conversation with Anne Jocelyn about libraries. Anne, come join me. Now, we must be very careful. You be on whatever side you prefer. I do have, have to start out to show you that I have a Nancy Pearl action figure here. I believe this was the second. Yes, this is actually the fourth. Oh, fourth. No, the third, the third or fourth, the third iteration. And you, you remember the first one was a shushing. But yeah. this one, this one is really um, serious. I mean, this one is really great because this person, this this person, <laughs> this action, because this says, you must come see this, you, you have to look at it, it says, um, when an age of darkness comes, a hero must rise. And the librarian action figure stands against censorship, anti-intellectualism, and ignorance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't you love it? So obviously, when we're done here, I'm going to ask for it to be autographed. Uh, and of course, I will yeah. say yes. <laughs> okay. So, so Anne, you've been at the Idaho State Library for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk about how things have changed there and in the world of libraries as a whole? Well, first of all, uh, I was hired by the Idaho State Library and now we are the Commission the for commission, Libraries. Right, right. Uh, and that is a, a very different organization than the one I joined back in 1979. And uh, I started as a part-time reference librarian. Um, I may talk where, about- where, where were you when you started as a reference? At the, at the at, state yes, library? Yes. Oh. Um, I had uh, hmm. worked at the Great Falls, Montana Public Library and the uh, Weber County Library in Ogden, Utah, prior to moving to Boise. And <clears throat> so I, I may talk about a couple of concepts here that as I look around, some people may not be familiar with. Um, <clears throat> Shortly after I started, um, I was asked to uh, learn the uh, process of what was called then online searching. And <laughs> let's pick this up closer to you. Oh, okay. Is that better? Thanks. Um, online the searching. The equipment was a little portable a TI, Texas instrument, uh, silent 700 with acoustic couplers. Does everybody know what acoustic couplers are? Okay, well, you, if you haven't worked with them, you're, you're fortunate. Um, so dial a phone number, put the phone, I mean, that kind of phone, you know, with a receiver, um, in the acoustic coupler, and that made a connection with a uh, big computer uh, in one of two or three uh, large companies where this is the service that they provided was online searching. So you would type in your search and you would get back um, citations. Um, <clears throat> so that's certainly gone totally away. <laughs> and um, I think for the first several years that I was there, I was heavily involved in what was going, you know, the basic work that goes inside of a library. Uh, as far as reference and interlibrary loan goes, and wasn't really very familiar with what was going on in libraries throughout the state. And it wasn't until 1985 when we uh, established a library development service uh, where we had staff that went out and actually worked with the libraries on um, continuing education and um, workshops and consulting, basically. Uh, and then I became very interested in that work and thought, hmm, this is more interesting than uh, working with a machine and answering reference questions. Though certainly one learns a lot, a little bit about many things if right. one is a, a reference librarian. 
Uh, and so it wasn't until that time that I really started um, seeing the Idaho library community, primarily public libraries at that time. And I, you know, I think they were pretty traditional. Um, many, many small libraries, small communities, um, and mostly women uh, working in the library, uh, waiting for people to come in and use the services that they had. Uh, the story times, not very much adult programming going on back then among most of the libraries. And um, so I will just jump ahead to now where I think it is so different in the library staff getting out into the community, delivering services, where the people are. Um, <clears throat> and I think Idaho libraries are doing an exceptional job in being on the forefront, um, taking risks, trying new things. That was one of my favorite um, quotes from our 2005 um, Futures Conference. I think it was author, science fiction author, um, Bruce Sterling, who encouraged us all to make many mistakes quickly. Try something, see if it works. If not, learn from it and move ahead. Now that only really works well as if you're not making the same mistake <laughs> many times quickly. But I, I, think, um, th I think that really energized and um, gave permission to a lot of people who attended that event um, to try new things, take a risk, and see what works, learn from it, and then move on. And I think that's really a very central change that I have seen, um, and it's still going on today. I love it. You know, in my past, it was those two librarians I talked about, Miss Whitehead and <coughs> Miss Long, <coughs> excuse me, especially Miss Whitehead. But who, who was important to you? Who's been important to you over the course of your career? Um, well, there obviously have been, been many. Uh, certainly the uh, state librarian who hired me in 1979. Um, she retired after I'd only been there for a year, so I did not have uh, a lot of experience with her. And that was definitely at a, at a time of significant change. Uh, I, maybe in libraries around, in other states as well, um, there was um, increased uh, accountability being called for in the federal funds and at that time library funds were coming out of the federal Department of Education and it was really a change from um, the older I guess Newtonian types of management uh, top-down um, very routine and structured everybody has their little role um, that you do over and over again uh, and the new state <laughs> librarian coming in uh, Charlie Bowles w uh, definitely was a mentor for me from the very beginning. He was, and I, I'm sure there are a few people in this room who um, worked with Charlie. Um, he was very enabling. Uh, his approach was to give individuals both the responsibility and the authority to do their job. And I certainly remember once he promoted me into um, head of library development in 1985, uh, times when he would say, well, that's not the way I would do it, but this is your job. Go for it and, and see what happens. And I, I learned so much from him in terms of how I worked. He, he was able to bring out more of me with that approach, and so therefore that's what I have adopted, tried to adopt um, with the people that I work with as well. So I, I would say that he is the most significant uh, influence. Um, I sort of grew up in the library world under him as a, a mentor, and um, I, I just think that it was um, a real gift that he passed on to me. How, how important do you, or do you think there's an, enough mentors in the library world? I mean, do you think people coming into the profession are getting that kind of mentoring that, that you got and that I got in a way? Oh, that, 
That's a hard question for me. I know there's a lot of talk about mentoring. I know the Idaho Library Association throughout the years has tried a couple of times to institutionalize some sort of mentoring system and um, it hasn't ever really taken off. And I, I think it is hard to, to make happen. Yeah. Um, th there are times where it does just happen. Uh, I never thought of myself as being a mentor, uh, but I will say in the last several months I've had a number of people tell me that I have been, so I'm not sure I fully understand that. Uh -huh. um, but I hope there is a lot going on. Uh, we all, and, and in both directions. Um, right. I, obviously, people newer to the profession uh, bring a lot, and those of us who have been around for a while, um, it, it helps us uh, look at things differently, and so it should go both ways. Do you remember this? this I, I remember my first, the first question that I ever got as a professional librarian and it was on a bookmobile in, in Detroit, and this little boy got on the bookmobile, and he said, um, he said, he, he was about eight, he said, there's a book I love, and I want to know if you have it. And I said, oh, you know, I prided myself on my knowledge of children's books. I said, um, what's the book? He said, it's called Mush the Male Mute. I said, <laughs> I said, mush, the male mute? He said, yes, mush, the male mute. Now, if you write it out, <laughs> it is, of course, mush, the male mute. <laughs> but that's not what he said. Yeah. <laughs> so that was difficult. So do you remember um, any of those questions? Um, this may not have been the first one, it, but it was pretty early on. Um, I moved to Great Falls from Iowa, not knowing anyone. I had not been there very long. And I'm sure it was an evening with school kids coming up and this uh, young man came up and asked to see the uh, CMR yearbook. And you know, when I was in graduate school, that's not one of the reference books <laughs> that we <laughs> um, became acquainted with. And I probably asked him to repeat it a couple of times. Yeah. I had no clue what he was talking about. I don't remember if I even tried to look it up in the card catalog, but I think somewhere along the line, I must have asked him with a very puzzled look on my face to, you know, what is that? Well, the main high school in Great Falls, Montana is the Charlie M. Russell <laughs> High School. And so he was asking for the high school yearbook of a certain year. <laughs> so I had not done my homework in terms of getting to know the community very well by that time. Were you a big reader as a child? Um, read a lot, yes. Um, and I was very fortunate to have parents um, that read to me uh, and to my two older sisters. Uh, we had books in the house. I remember, I don't know if I was four or five, someplace in there, um, and for my birthday, uh, a present was, it was probably the cat in the hat comes back, and I was thrilled. Um, so again, very fortunate to have books in the house, kids' books in the house, and parents, mom and dad, who read to us, and I saw them reading as well. And I grew up uh, on a farm outside a small community population, about 900. The public library was um, in the librarian's house. Um, mm. I don't know what the house, her home looked like, but the way the, the small house was designed, you walk in the front door and that was the main uh, room of the library with, I think, just books around the outside walls. walls. I don't remember bookshelves in between. And her desk, she was sitting right there, standing sentry when you first walked in the door. And then the kids and young adult section um, was what was probably, well, I've seen a lot of walk-in closets that are bigger than that. <laughs> and the Bobsy twins and all those, and then little older Nancy Drew and, uh, and Hardy Boys. Um, 
so I didn't have a lot to draw on from the library, but we did go to the library um, as well as the books that we had at home. Did you have a school library, a library in your school? <laughs> Not until I think I was in junior high. Mm -hmm. um, there were classroom shelves of books. I won't say yeah, they were libraries. Right. Um, and then the high school study hall, again, had um, one long wall that were books. Um, but it wasn't until I started in junior high and um, the school built a new addition that had maybe three classrooms and actually a school library. They hired a math teacher whose wife was actually a real school librarian in that oh. small town. And I don't remember how this came about, but I ended up volunteering in the library. So there you go. And, and did that sort of decide you that you wanted to be a librarian? You know, after you asked me if there was anything you, I didn't want you to <laughs> ask, <laughs> I thought, hmm, I wonder if she's going to ask me how I became, decided to uh, go to graduate school, really. Right, right. And I will say this, um, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> and um, I graduated from, I mean, you all can probably figure this out, so I might as well say it. I gradu graduated from uh, college in 1974, so this was the 70s. And it's not because I was sitting around staring at blank walls a lot. <laughs> that what about your navel? Were you staring <laughs> that, that either. Um, um, so I don't know why I don't remember, but I do not remember <laughs> what triggered me to, to go to graduate school. Uh, but I did, and um, I certainly have not had any regrets. Yeah, it's a great profession. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, to, to talk about what you like to read, or or are there are there areas that you don't like to read in? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. If there are areas that I don't like, I probably haven't ventured that far yet. Um, I've come to really appreciate um, young adult literature. I don't read very much of it, but um, I find it very interesting. And um, also, for those of you who work with that group, I find it really disconcerting when um, books that reflect what kids are really going through um, are censored or challenged. Um, I do read some nonfiction. I just finished uh, reading the Seven Ages of Paris, which I don't think was on anybody's bestseller list, but I have really enjoyed the history of Paris, not France, but Paris, and Paris is the main character in this book. Um, it, uh, it took me a long time, took about eight ages to get through it, but um, <laughs> I did enjoy it. Um, and I just started reading the local book, um, by the man who hiked the uh, Camino de Santiago, uh, Kurt, is it Kiefer, Kurt? I don't remember exactly his last name, but I'm finding that one very interesting. Um, uh, Leanne, I read uh, The Soul of the Octopus, and that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that there's another book out by that author now, which I have to look up. So, you know, uh, fiction, nonfiction, uh, some science fiction. Um, I, I just haven't been able to read enough. So, looking so, forward to that. So do you have a pile of books I or do. A, a list of books that you're looking uh, forward to? A, a pile, yeah, be, beside my bed, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it, it is a mix. Um, I am ashamed to say I have not read Educated yet. It's in the, in the stack, I know. <laughs> My sisters are <coughs> complaining that I haven't read that one yet. Um, but I did read uh, Kim Barnes' book. Um, you know the title, <laughs> right? Yeah, but I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel really good. Um, Laura is here, she probably remembers No, Kim Barnes, her new book. Uh, Kim Barnes' first book. Uh, 
this is a room for a, it's, it's yeah. well I'm not hearing anyone shout it out but yeah yeah so but um, Where, where's that telephone when we need it that we <laughs> yeah. can connect it but I I will say that I heard uh, Kim Barnes and if for those of you who have not read that first book oh there I don't have my glasses on um, is it the kingdom? No, the first book, In the Wilderness. In the Wilderness, yeah. She grew Thank up uh, at least partially in a uh, logging camp in North Idaho, uh, ended up going to Lewiston High School, uh, a father in particular, uh, a member of a rather obscure and extremely uh, conservative uh, religious beliefs, and how um, the story of her um, as a youth uh, rebellion against that. Uh, last I knew, she's uh, a professor of English at yeah. the University of Idaho, and I heard her speak at um, a statewide gathering of some sort in Boise, and she said the same thing that you did, that even today when she speaks in front of a group, she is afraid she is going to mispronounce something because her tremendous vocabulary she read or learned by reading and she never heard so many words spoken. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, if people say to you, like, um, well, you read, you know, they always say it in this sort of nasty thing. Well, you read so much, Nancy, how come you don't know how to pronounce, like one time I mispronounced ego and said ego. Um, <laughs> you know, they said, how come you don't know how to pronounce anything? And then you just say, you have a reader's vocabulary, mm -hmm. so. So, but it sounds like you do like memoirs and biographies. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I do. Um, I'm also finding that I, um, maybe it's because I was not getting through books as fast as I wanted, I uh, started reading um, more magazines. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really fascinated by uh, some of the uh, discoveries in science, uh, CRISPR gene editing, um, so many things being discovered um, about the universe, uh, entanglement. Um, now, as I'm reading some of these articles that are written for uh, the general public, um, I sort of understand how mm -hmm. they're describing this. Can't begin to describe it to anyone else, but I, I find that fascinating. What, what, are some, what are some issues, important issues, facing the world of libraries that you see that you're sort of saying, Whew, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. Because I can think of plenty. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, the, all of the um, challenges, I guess I will say, uh, facing young kids uh, that for the most part, um, weren't very prevalent. I won't say they didn't exist uh, back when I was growing up. Um, technology has a lot to do that with that, I think. Um, and um, of course, the the good, but also the downside of that. Um, and I I think that's something that librarians can help address, but of course they can't solve the problem. Um, seeing the social fabric, um, and there's a lot of talk about this now, uh, with older people or single people, uh, and how libraries can, um, what all they can, might do to reach out and, and help people who are feeling isolated. Uh, I was telling McGill, um, I just read an article that he cited in his most recent um, Future of Libraries uh, electronic newsletter and reading about the um, intentional uh, distribution of incorrect information. I, I don't even want to use incorrect, it's wrong, it's not true. <laughs> um, through social media and the intentionality of doing it in ways that will um, spread widely in order to disrupt society 
again, that's not just a library problem, but I think it's one we all are very concerned about and see that we may have a role in, um, but I think that's very disconcerting. Uh, for a long time, I've seen too, this is just uh, maybe a more basic level, um, <clears throat> as more and more, as information becomes available in more and more different uh, ways and we're looking at providing experiences as a form of information. Um, people still want uh, the more traditional services and so it's a challenge for libraries to do some of all of that. Um, we can't do it all and do it well, but then that's where it's so important to know your community and what is most meaningful to them. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of challenges, but there are so many opportunities and in terms of um, thinking, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. On the other side, uh, we were so, the staff at the commission were so excited recently when it became apparent that we had the opportunity to offer um, a master's program in the Treasure Valley area. And um, Tammy put out a feeler and in no time at all, she had 30 responses and then she had, what, 50? Um, and it's so <coughs> rewarding, I think, to understand, I mean, obviously not all those people are gonna start a master's program this fall, but there is so much interest in the profession instead of that, what we've heard for quite a long time, oh, you know, libraries are going away, librarians are going away, um, and that's certainly not the case. So I think there's an awfully lot to be encouraged about and excited about, and part of me hopes that I can sort of keep in touch and see how all this turns out. Let me just ask you a couple more questions and okay. then let you go. <laughs> um, what do you say to, what do you say to people when people say, why do we need buildings? You know, why do we need library buildings? Because you can get everything you need online. Yep. Well, I'm, I don't have a polished uh, elevator speech for that, but. Well, from uh, your heart, <laughs> that's all. Oh, yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> I, I tend to assume that people who say that probably have not spent much time in a 21st century library who is providing the services that its community needs. And so asking the person, have you been in the library recently? Um, do you know that you might get access to a, a 3D printer there? Uh, you might be able to build a robot there. Um, you can check out a bicycle there. You know, just giving examples of what so many libraries are offering today. And usually the response is, oh, I didn't know libraries did that. And <clears throat> I will be very happy when the day comes that people don't say that anymore. <laughs> right. And, and my last question, um, I'm a recent convert to audio books. Mm -hmm. Are you, or do you, listen, do you read electronically or tr in traditional paper and ink or uh, audio or all three? Uh, most of what I read is in print, the old-fashioned kind. Um, I have uh, listened to audiobooks. Uh, I find when, if I try to do that around home, typically I'm going from one room to the other. I, I don't have the most modern uh, compact equipment, so you know the player is in this room and I might be in uh -huh. three or four other rooms. Uh, so that, that might change. I, yeah. Um, do you have and a birthday coming up? I can oh. see a, a good present <laughs> good waiting idea. for you. Right, right. Um, I do read a couple of, um, of magazines uh, electronically, not uh -huh. all the way through, but occasionally. And um, I was painting a room um, last summer or so, and I was able to listen to a book. Um, it was a pretty long one can't remember for sure what it was right now, but that was great, you know, I was stationary. Um, it didn't require, my job did not require me to focus very much, and I could really listen 
to to the book, and that that was perfect. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I just I just came back from England where. I walked 127 miles in 10 days from Leeds to Liverpool, and I listened to three wonderful mysteries oh. and many podcasts, and it just, you know, was, was so I highly recommend yeah. Yeah. that. And I just want to say, um, I know everybody in this room wishes you a wonderful, wonderful retirement and knows that you will always love libraries and keep them close to your heart and do whatever you can to keep supporting them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.